this one that they were tension, confused. <clears throat> that keep practicing and practicing, and you know, every day you feel looser and looser, right? Then after three years, like you can drive with one hand or even one finger. Okay? Uh, that's very similar. That's why in the beginning, if you have tension here, then you should not worry. But the important thing is just keep doing it. Can you recommend a... Um... And if you really can't relax, you are doing it many times, if you really, really can't relax, then you should drink wine. <laughs> Vino Rosso. Vino Tinto. Good Red one, white. good ones. <laughs> No, no, I'm not joking. Eh? You know, when I was trained in the yoga, okay, there are some Tibetan yogas are very difficult postures. They're really the talum. And you have to jump and you do many things. And some, some of these uh, exercises are very extreme exercises, you know. I tried so hard. I couldn't do it. Then I asked my master, what can I do? He said, keep doing it. When I was uh, reading a book, and uh, one book said, drink alcohol. <laughs> then I thought, maybe this is a better solution. So I had one bottle of beer, and my yoga was perfect. <laughs> and then next day, I try again, it didn't work, you know. Then I drank beer again. Actually, that's the reason why I became alcoholic. <laughs> and then I stopped doing yoga, okay? <laughs> Uh, I used to drink for a few years, but somehow it started like that, you know. <clears throat> Can you recommend um, a way to incorporate this practice? Like, because you mentioned there's a spiritual retreat where you fast for seven days, but if I'm working and going to work every day, I wouldn't want to do the fasting. But <clears throat> you can do semi-fasting. It means uh, instead of eating three times, you eat uh, two times, twice. And then, in, you know, you can skip a breakfast or dinner. So then instead of dinner, you do this uh, meditation. Do you understand? So you do this one at night? Yeah. Okay. Um, or you do this in the morning and skip breakfast. Yeah, so instead of eating food, you do this meditation. And then you feel like your body is filled with bliss, so you don't have desire for eating. Do you understand? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the ones who uh, bought the pill yesterday, this is a pill of longevity, so instead of breakfast or instead of dinner, you take the pill. First you take the pill, and if you have time, it's good to do this meditation too. Okay? But this meditation, you just do this meditation without uh, pills and anything. Mm -hmm. Good. So this is how you can integrate in your daily life, this meditation. <clears throat> instead of food, you know, instead of eating real food, you eat uh, bliss. Mm -hmm. Hold the breath and this and that. Yeah, like I told you yesterday, if meditation, when meditation really works, you can stop eating. Okay, because at the end, you, you know why, why we eat. One, because we are hungry. Number two, the main reason is because we like the taste of food, right? You know, we want to enjoy. We want to eat sweet. We want to eat this and that. We like, like the taste. So we are kind of craving for the taste. Maybe body doesn't need it, but our mind is craving. We want to taste that food, right? So when once you tasted the, the bliss, you don't want to taste other things. Okay, this is also the reason like uh, some monks, when they do meditation, uh, when they do many years of meditation, some monks and the nuns, they are really free from sexual desire. You understand? So otherwise, even their monks and nuns, they have a human body and they eat human food, you know, so it's like, uh, like us. And the sexual desire and that feeling, it's a biological desire and feeling, of course, they have it too. But if they do some special meditation, similar like this, if they reach the bliss through the meditation, and then the normal sexual desire and normal orgasm is not that important. Do you understand? You tasted something stronger than that. Do you get it? It's really like that. And that's why Buddha, for example, 
why he was uh, free from this kind of, uh, how do you say, sexual desire. Okay? But maybe in our time there are not so many, very few. <laughs> very few, but uh, I think it, it, it's possible you reach that level. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah, I know that the bliss, when the people experience, when you talk about the bliss, is, that's why I'm saying in my expression, this kind of, or, it is or, like an orgasmic feeling, but it's like uh, 10 times or 100 times stronger than that. Okay? Our, we, our mind and body is experiencing it, so we call it a tigle experience. So that's why if you really do this uh, meditation, it's possible that you trans transform, uh, how do you say, you transform your desire for food. Mm -hmm. And that's why in the text says that you, we will lose the desire of food, right? But you, you kind of lost appetite, you don't want to eat, but then sometimes maybe body is starving and body needs energy, you know, you feel weak and a little bit dizzy, then you have to take the soup broth. That's what's written in the text. Okay? Good? Yeah, so skip one meal and do this meditation. That's it. <laughs> okay, other questions? All right, yes? Um, I just wanted to know the, the little capsules that Hold you on, gave me yesterday. <clears throat> um, the little capsules that you gave me yesterday from Switzerland. I forget the name of them. I'm just curious to see where I can... The three fruit. Oh, the three fruit. Okay. Yeah. okay. Three fruit. You want the box? Yeah. You can keep the box. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Good throw. <laughs> um, so if you want to take... Ah, today we are supposed to make these flower children. Where are the flowers? Uh, can you ask... Uh, Justin, can you bring the flowers, flowers here? Mm-hmm. We have the flowers. Okay, do you oh, remember... Can you come over here? It's the first I've heard about. Make oh. sure they come over. Okay. Um, I'm yeah, yeah, don't worry. I'll read that later. Uh, do you remember that Tibetan word, Chudlen? Chudlen, yeah? What does it mean? <coughs> taking the essence. Chudlen means taking the essence, right? So we can do, uh, how do you say, two kinds of Chudlen. Two kinds of Chudlen. <coughs> and uh, easy, the easy Chudlen is what? Okay, we can say like that. Maybe we can put in three kinds of chulin. Um, so the first type is we are taking the chulin pills. Okay, we call chulin pills, you know, like the capsules, the pills, and they are called the pill of rejuvenation. If you are young, if you take that pills, the pills help you to keep your use, you know, your young energy. If you're not that young, if you take the pills, pills make you become younger. Rejuvenation, okay? Rejuvenation pills. So in Tibetan, it's called the Chulen Rilpu. Chulen is the name of the practice. The Rilpu means pills, okay? Chulen Rilpu. And uh, so there are different kinds of uh, Chulen Rilpu, the pills. But the one I gave you yesterday, that's called the three fruit. It's a mixture of, uh, what do you say, there's three kinds of marabalan. Do you know marabalan? Marabalan is a plant, the one in the hand of medicine Buddha. Okay, according to Tibetan medicine, Soharikpa, marabalan is the most powerful, most magic, uh, what do you say, the, the plant or the fruit for healing. Okay? How do you, so, how do you spell it? And Mero Balan M Y O R O Mero Balan. Mero Balan. Mero Balan. So there are three types of Mero Balan. Okay, there are three types of fruits, and each fruit the balance each our humors, right? Our bile, our phlegm and our wind, okay? That's the, how do you say, the most uh, famous rejuvenation and also the easiest one. So you can get this also the Ayurvedic tradition. You know, Ayurveda, they call Trifala, right? Trifala. But Trifala, I think it's better you be careful. Maybe there are some companies, they make a very good quality. Some companies, they mix different things. I don't know which one is a good one. Eric said this, uh, 
Organic, organic in here. Organic in here. Okay, yes. and the... By four, why by four? Yeah, first, just to bring the flowers, we show the flowers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... We can grind this afternoon. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so that one, the, the pill, sorry, let me finish this. So you, if you get these capsules, you can take like three capsules per day. You can take three all together or one morning, one afternoon, one lunch, okay? If you want to make it easy, just three capsules together, morning, or the best of time is actually lunch time. Lunch time, before lunch, like 10 minutes uh, before, before lunch, you take three uh, capsules. Or if you want to skip uh, lunch, you take the pills, you don't take lunch, just to drink, okay? And so that's one of the best julep. And this, uh, yeah, for me, was my personal. Actually, that's my personal medicine. When I travel, I get tired, and time to time I take this. It, it really works. It's very, very good. And uh, so we believe this one also rejuvenates our blood. Okay? Rejuvenating the blood. Once the blood is rejuvenated, and then everything is okay. Okay, so that's about this. And traditionally, if this uh, uh, sweet fruit powder, you can mix also with honey, if you like to eat sweet, mix with honey. You can uh, open the capsules, three capsules, maybe one uh, teaspoon of honey you mix and take this, or with ghee, purified butter. You can mix with butter or this. And yeah, in Europe, sometimes I mix that with also olive oil. Mm -hmm. When you have the too much wind energy, something oily substance is better. Okay, so that's the one thing. And then maybe you know another uh, mineral. It's called the mumio. You know mumio. You know mumio. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, Altai. The best quality is from Altai. Do you know mumio? Shilajit. Indian they call shilajit. If you get the shilajit, it's uh, like a mineral, like a liquid mineral, shilajit. Indians, they call it shilajit. That one you can take very little, you know, like one pinch. So if you get the powder one, just one pinch and put in one glass of water, one water and you drink it, like a coffee. <clears throat> so if you are suffering from any kind of inflammations, Infections and inflammations, and that's the best julep. Okay, I told you, you know, why we are aging fast because one is because of inflammation, right? There are some doctors, some scientists, they are so believed that we are aging, aging fast because we have different kinds of inflammations and so on. So, the mumio silajit is the best solution, is one of the best. Silajit, if you get the silajit. I think you can buy also in the internet. The one production is from Poland. You know, Eastern Europe and Russia is very popular, right? Mm -hmm. Shilajit. Yeah. So it's it's very rich with the zinc. You know zinc, right? It's full of zinc, this shilajit. And if you take this, if your body takes the shilajit, you feel so much energy. Okay? Tibetan medicine says the shilajit has a gold energy. The five metals energy, gold, silver, copper, iron, like this, all right? Sometimes you take shilajit, you feel you are like an iron, iron man, iron woman. You can work and work and work. So it's really like a tonic, you know? But sometimes you need to feel very nice and like a golden energy. Then you take shilajit or something, something. <laughs> it's like really energizing, okay? If you feel tired and you feel weak and exhaustion, burnout, burnout, burnout. So that's a, shilajit is a very good solution. Do you get burnout? Who got burnout? Ah, shilajit, shilajit. That is the best solution. <laughs> the best of best in the world. Could you spell that? Shilajit. Okay. Huh? Yeah. How do you spell it? Okay.
Sheila S H I L A J T Sheila J T J T Sheila J T Russian they call Mumio. Have you eaten Mumio? Yeah, they are worst. Yeah, it, it has. A, yeah, in Russia they use they give the kids because it's very good for immune system. Okay. You know, when your immune system is weak, you are getting cold and flu and these things. If you take shilajit, really, yeah, very good for immune system. Kids can take this? Yeah, yeah. But uh, the problem is where it has a very bad taste. My yeah. God. It tastes like a urine, you know, cow urine. Yeah. But for, for me, I like it. I, I take it like my coffee, you know. Also, if you drink espresso without sugar, is Strong taste, right? Would you just take a pinch? Yeah, but pinch, if you put it in the water. Yeah, yeah, anyway, here, yes. It's Shilajit is a good thing too. Yeah. And then another very easy substances for if you want to rejuvenate yourself, okay? Very easy and very cheap one. You know what? Garlic. Garlic. But the, the wild garlic is better. What? Why the garlic? The garlic, the small garlics they grow in the you know in the, ramps. in the forest. Why they're called garlic? ramps around here. Huh? Ramps is what they're called locally. Ramps. Ramps. You call them ramps. Ramps. Yeah. <laughs> the ramps. The ramps. They are the best. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> the ramps are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you have to pick them up when they are young, not when you become old, okay? When they are young, you pick them up, yes. and then you clean and dry, then you can make a soup and this. This in Tibet, this is the secret remedy for older people, okay? You know, then people are saying, oh, they cannot sleep, they are weak, they have problems in the joint and the pain everywhere, or they are losing their memory, or they worry too much, you know, this kind of typical old age symptoms, <laughs> old age symptoms, okay? The easiest solution is this, ramps. <laughs> okay? You said that it helps make them sleep? Yeah, yeah. Yes, the yeah, garlic. Yeah, the garlic. yeah, yeah, of course. An older person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told you the remedy, the best remedy is for sleep, right? One is nutmeg. Did you try nutmeg? Nutmeg, yeah, I tried nutmeg. Did it work? It worked. It seemed to come, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that make really works. But it doesn't work, you have to increase the dosage. Mm -hmm. Okay? As people have, have questions, not um, make raise your hand, we'll get you a mic. It's for, some of us have hard hearing, so we'll wait for us to get a mic to you. Okay. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> make is very good. Mm -hmm. Okay? It doesn't work, increase dosage and so on. But in any case, if you take too much nutmeg next day, you get some headache too. And then the second, the best uh, natural sleeping remedy is uh, garlic and onion. Garlic and onion. It should be, the best is if you can take the dried the powder, you know. The dried garlic and dried uh, onion. Okay? Yes? Um, how, why is onion and garlic sometimes not given to monks? Like when you have special lamas coming, it's usually one of the foods they ask you not to give them, like garlic or onions. Why if would that monks, be? monks, they are complaining about the garlic, maybe they have secret lovers. No. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's in the lot of the Okay. The real thing is like this. In some tradition, they call it uh, black food. Okay, black food. Of course, meat is a black food, fish is a black food, and also egg, because they're saying that it brings uh, bad karma, okay? They're especially vegetarians. And then some text says uh, black food, also garlic and onion. They're really against, you know, the spiritual tradition. You know why? Because if you eat garlic and onion, it makes you sleepy. So if you are sleepy, you don't meditate. Okay, but in the medicine, in the medical tradition, both garlic and onion, they're excellent medicine. Because they relax us and we fall asleep and this and that, right? Excellent medicine. But in the spiritual tradition, it, it's really true. You, you can try, you know, if you eat garlic and onion, it really makes you sleepy. 
And if you fall asleep, your sleep is deep too, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay? Garli. So Tibetan, uh, what do you say, expression? Tsung gok nil pel. Tsung means uh, onion, gok, gok pa is uh, garlic. Nil pel means it increases the sleep. Increasing the sleepiness. So monks, if they eat too much of this, then they're always sleepy. They're not meditating, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Yes? With the nutmeg, is it um, universal for everyone that it puts them to sleep? Does it? Um, I've been drinking it for a while in my water and it wakes me up. I drink it in the morning. Is there any reason why? Well, there's nothing is for universal. But normally, let's say the nutmeg works for 80% of people. It's like a coffee espresso, right? Most of people, they drink espresso, you wake up. But some people I know, they drink, they fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> so that's called the opposite reaction. Maybe you get this opposite reaction. You get to wake up completely. How much did you take? Shake. Not so much, yeah? Uh -huh. Maybe you increase the dosage a little bit. Then you will see the stars. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, maybe uh, does it with you. Yeah, it's this, this one we call it opposite reaction. You know this, right? Coffee. Some people, they really drink very strong double espresso and then they fall asleep immediately. But before they drink this, they can sleep. Something strange, yeah. Maybe 10% of people, they have this uh, opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. We call it a donu. In Tibetan, we have a word, opposite reaction. Everyone is waking up, but for some people, they fall asleep. For everyone is sleeping, and for some people, waking up. Then you have to find another remedy for you. Okay? You know, it's, uh, I want to say this one, uh, because we are talking about the longevity and this and that. Uh, of course, if you read in my book, the rec recommendation about the food and this and that, right? There are many things. And if you read many medical papers or scientific papers, they talk so many things, you know, about the vegetables, about the fruit, we have to eat these, and that. there are so many things, right? But I'm very interested in this, uh, the Italian lady, Emma Morano, you know, I, I think she passed away two months ago. Italian lady, she was the oldest human in this planet. She was 117 years old. 117. Okay? And she had a very strange diet, okay? Scientists, they don't understand her. Her doctor is saying, oh, you have to eat more vegetables and fruit. You know what she said? She said, I don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> what did she eat? What did she eat? That's the question. You know, scientifically it says, eat more vegetables and fruit. That's why her doctor, she said, I don't like them. <laughs> I like them. They don't eat. So what she was eating in the morning, she was eating egg boiled egg, lunch she's eating two raw eggs. Or she eats two raw eggs, or she eats this uh, tatar, you know the Italian, the raw meat, the red meat. It's called tatar, right? Tatar, yes. Huh? Yes, steak tartar. You see, or she eats a raw egg, or she has a raw meat, okay, for lunch. And dinner, chicken. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no, <of course. laughs> so, when I made that joke, I said, oh my God, she's eating the mummy and the baby. <laughs> right? Chicken and egg, egg and chicken, mummy and baby. She's eating. <laughs> so she must have a bad karma. But she lived 117 years old. And the amazing thing is, her mind is so clear. It's not, you know, the older people with dementia or Parkinson and this. She, she's so clear. She always wants to eat, uh, you know, this raw egg, and she really wants to make sure she gets this, uh, her favorite food. Okay? And then, so that's why, you know, for her, for example, the egg is the secret uh, remedy. That's what I think. The egg was really the secret remedy for her because she's eating three eggs per day. She keep 117, and she was still very awake, and she's very strong. She was joking, you know. And she was telling also her love stories. 
she, she was in love when she was young and she really liked that guy. That guy was killed in First World War. Okay, then of course, you know, she had a very sad, she was very sad and so on. And then she met another Italian guy, I think he's, he was from Sicilia, Sicilia, very jealous man. <laughs> he said, oh, you marry me or I will kill you. <laughs> that, that's her husband, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she said that clearly. She said, you know, this man said, oh, marry me, or okay, kill me. But of course, she chose life. <laughs> she chose life. <laughs> and then it seems when she was 70, something like her husband dead, okay? She, was, she said she was so happy. <laughs> her husband is dead. Ah. She said, finally, I'm free. And she said, I didn't, I did not. I didn't want to marry again, and I liked it what she said. She said, I don't want to be, uh, how do you say, commanded by anyone. Mm. Commanded by anyone. She said, I choose my free life. Yeah, she's very strong, you know, but, you know, psychologically, I think she had so much uh, stress, you know, abuse. This is, her relation is very abusive, you know this and that, but I really believe this, her secret remedy was that raw eggs. Mm -hmm. So why I'm telling this story, you, you see, of course, scientifically it doesn't work much, right? She gets only proteins, proteins, lots of proteins, egg protein, meat protein, and chicken protein. Proteins, 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 and then maybe it's too fat, maybe it's too this and that. You know, scientifically, if you judge, there are so many things. And then she's not eating enough fruit and veggies. Right? But what is the reality? She lived 117 years old and without any, what do you say, major disease, you know? Especially without any neurodegenerative disease. So, uh, what I really believe is, I think each of us individually, there must be a secret remedy for us. But that secret remedy probably in our kitchen. It's not in the Himalayan mountains or, you know, go somewhere. I'm sure it's in our kitchen. <clears throat> right? And for some of us, it's the garlic. For some of us, it's the onion. Some of us, I'm sure, it's the tomato. <laughs> and for some of us, it's the egg. Do you understand? So that's why I think this, I like this Tibetan medicine way of seeing how do you say, in the uh, individual conditions, mm. right? So today we say, okay, this is good, good for everyone. Oh, this is bad, bad for everyone. I think that's like a too generalized uh, idea. So that's why I think, same thing also for meditation. You know, you try many different kinds of meditation, and sometimes they say, oh, this meditation is wonderful, this and that. You try, it doesn't work with you. So it simply, it means it's wrong meditation for you. It's not a bad meditation, it's a good meditation, but for you it doesn't work. So it's better you choose another one, okay? <clears throat> so that's why I, I think we really have to, we must find our secret remedies for ourselves. That's the key point. And then, yeah, most of the case, I think all these secret remedies, they are not uh, hard to find or they are expensive ones. They are very cheap ones, actually. Mm -hmm. Yes? Did she keep her own chickens? Uh, that's I don't know. <laughs> that's I don't know. How long was she on Wait the Wait for microphone? Yeah, uh, it sends, uh, yeah, all time. Okay. Yeah, like lifetime. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so... Now we are going to talk about this uh, subtle anatomy. Do you have this paper here? Yeah, just in some people who need this paper. Yeah. Subtle anatomy. Subtle anatomy. Yeah, channels, energy, and essence. Subtle anatomy. Subtle anatomy. I'll bring it to everybody. Yeah, turn it on. Just the other button. The other button. There you go. Yes. Yes. Thank you, sir. Oh, 
different layers, so one of the layer of mind is called the soul, a part of mind, okay? Yeah, when we talk about mind, it's interesting, you know? So, you know, mind, consciousness, these things. For a scientist, for a scientist, for them, consciousness and the brain is exactly the same, there's no difference, you know? For them, a live brain is the consciousness, consciousness is the brain, there, there is no difference. But of course, in the many spiritual traditions, we are always talking there is a mind, or in the mind there is a soul. Okay? And uh, I think the, the thing is like this. It, it's true, everything is functioning through our brain and nervous system and so on, okay? So what I really think is how it's working is like this. Let's say our human body is a very, very, very highly sophisticated machine. Actually, that's true, you know, right? Our human body is the most sophisticated object ever existed on this planet. That's human body. So we can imagine that our human body is a very, very highly, highly highly sophisticated, like a spaceship, spaceship, okay? Giant, the machine, and so sophisticated. And our scientists are saying, this machine, the ship, is everything functioning automatically. Okay, there's no driver. You know, everything's like a computer programmed, and it works automatically. Like, that's where, how they said our brain is functioning, neurons are working, blah, 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 all these things, okay? I think they are kind of imagining this uh, space, very sophisticated spaceship works by itself, automatically. Once it's broken, it's broken, that's it, okay? But the way how we think is, there is a driver, it's not everything functioning by itself, but the driver, it's an invisible driver, right? If you go there, it seems there's no driver, functioning automatically because we don't see the driver. But in reality, inside there is an invisible, powerful driver, and that's the consciousness. Okay? So that's, uh, yeah, I'll try to think an uh, example many times. So then later I thought this way, maybe that helps to understand. So that means our brain is the machine, it has so many functions, but inside there, there is a driver, invisible driver. So that should be the consciousness. That's why once we are dead, body is dead, the machine is dead, but the driver eject, you know. Driver have to find another machine. That's the consciousness. Okay? So the one part of this driver, you can call it the soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's like a coin. Mind. Yeah, yeah, you can say like that too. Right? What it was so it's kind of like uh, if you um, if you get to control the driver mind, so you will pacify like the soul, or the soul is at peace. Like that's how you look at it. Yeah. I think mind is in, in Tibetan. We say same mind is the gender word. So soul can be part of it. Mm -hmm. Right, so they drive together. Huh? They drive together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it actually it's the how do you say it's the same driver, yeah. Oh, okay. Same driver has two names. <laughs> 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 oh oh it depends. You are talking the you know the front aspect of the driver or you are talking the back side of the driver. Yeah, yeah, like coins, yeah. Okay. All right, so now we see this, uh, we see about this uh, most sophisticated machine, <laughs> human body, okay? You know, something interesting, in the medical way, if we look about our human body, so we can always see in three levels, right? In modern medicine, 
The first is the cellular level, the cells. We are talking about cells and cells and cells. And the second is the tissue levels, right? We have cells, and the cells demake the tissues, and the tissues demake organs. And all organs are putting together, it's called that's the human body, right? Cellular level, tissue level, and organ level. And now we see how in Tibetan medicine we see about the human body. Okay, about the human body. So again, there are two ways. One is called the, the gross element. So how to see our, our, the organs in our body. For example, the skin is an organ, you know, then our body uh, constituents about muscles, blood, bone, bone marrow, and then the inner organs and all these things. Okay, it's kind of a medical way to see this. Uh, something very interesting in Tibetan medicine, you know, Tibetan medicine has uh, something very similar to the modern medicine. If you study the modern medicine today, you know, at the university, what, what subject do you start with? No. You study anatomy, right? Embryology, anatomy, and then physiology. So you try to understand the, what human body made of and how it's functioning and how it's structured, right? This is important because this is our main subject. We have to know all about these things. And Tibetan medicine says exactly the same thing. That's why when we study Tibetan medicine, first we study about embryology, you know, the, the conception and then how the embryo is developing every week and every month and this and that. That's the starting point. And then the, after that, we have study of uh, anatomy, all about this, you know, different uh, systems and uh, this. And then we have study of uh, physiological functions, okay? Embryology, anatomy, physiological functions. It's very similar to Western medicine concept, you know, right? Because you have said, if we become a doctor, we have, you know, we work with the human body. We have to know how human body is created. And we have to know how human body is existing, functioning, okay? Only if we know these things clearly and then, it, then we know what balance is, but then also we know what imbalance is and what are the causes and what are the symptoms and how we can diagnose it and how we can rebalance it, okay? So everything starts from there. And... Um, yeah, about this uh, part, if you compare to TCM, Chinese medicine, and Ayurveda, they don't talk too much about uh, anatomy and these things. Even they talk anatomy, maybe it's metaphoric anatomy. Tibetan medicine, anatomy, about muscles is real muscles. We talk bones, real bones. The organs, they are organs by themselves. You know, it's, I think it's very close to the it's, uh, yeah, modern medical uh, view. And then, so once we study the, that part, and then there is a more a subtle level of our body study, okay? Subtle level. First, we have to learn the physical part and medical study, and then we learn this subtle part here. That's why we call this a subtle anatomy. And this subtle body is specially used in the Tibetan Buddhism, okay? In, uh, what do you say, in Vajrayana. Again, in Vajrayana says, you want to meditate, it's okay, you meditate. But first, it's better you know some key points, you know. You want to do meditation with your body, you can do it. You know, like yoga, you want to do yoga, yes, you can do yoga. But before you do yoga, it's good you learn about the human body, how it's functioning, what's the anatomy, this and that, okay? You want to do mantra, do you want to chanting, it's good, you can do it. But before you start to chanting, it's good to know why you need to chant, you know, why you need to say mantras, the reasons, okay? So that part is coming here too. And also meditation, you want to meditate, there are so many different kinds of meditations. It's, it's okay, you meditate, but before you meditate, it's good to know about the mind a little bit, okay? We don't need to learn so many things, but the basic things. If you know these things, if you know these things, then if you meditate, it will work. Otherwise, you meditate, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, then you get confused, and then this one, that one, you understand? Maybe your meditation is not working because you don't understand what you're doing. All right? 
like we talked about bliss and bliss and bliss, now here in this text talks about uh, why we have to focus on the bliss. Okay? And actually this bliss is something we have already, or we have to bring somewhere and then put it in the body. So all these kind of, uh, what do you say, basic uh, explanations are here in this uh, text. Okay, so subtle anatomy, we call our channels, energies, and essences. Channels and energies and essences, okay? Channels, energies, and essences. And then you see the three doors, the gross level and subtle level. Three doors, I told you already. So when we think about ourselves, there are three main aspects, right? The body, mind, and speech. Body, mind, and speech. But it seems in the Western culture, we don't focus too much on the speech. Western culture is more body or mind, or mind or body, right? <laughs> body problems or mind mental problems. So more divided in two things. But you see in the most of Asian tradition, they always talk about speech. They always talk why the speech is so important. Speech and speech and speech and speech. All right? So speech is equally important to the body and the mind. That's why we call it three doors. Then, uh, as I told you already yesterday, you can approach yourself from the body, doing sport, from movement and exercise, you know. You go for a jogging and jogging, then you say, oh, I have some pain in my knee, right? And then you start to think more about the knee. Then maybe you read more books about your knees. <laughs> then you say, oh, my knees is like this. But then, then you, like, slowly, because you're using your body more and more, you have some symptoms or this and that, and then you're interested and you learn more and more. So slowly, 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 you'll be expert in anatomy and physiology. <laughs> but that's good because then the, you, it's not you're going to become a doctor, but then you know about yourself, your body, right? You know, you know about the work, your joints, you know about your skin, you know about your this and that, right? And the more you know yourself, for sure, the more you like yourself, okay? And you don't, uh, how do you say, reject yourself. The less you know yourself, and then the more you reject yourself. Do you understand? <clears throat> you see, we are always, you know, one of our main fear is uh, gossips, gossips about ourselves. Do you understand? Friends are talking bad about ourselves. You know, how ugly we are, how these <laughs> and that. Like, we are scared of these uh, gossips. And then, because we, we think too much about uh, what other people are talking about us, then what we do? We try to use different masks. <laughs> okay? And sometimes you think your mother is very kind, and maybe your mother is trying to put a very hard, you know, mask, smiling mask to you <laughs> <laughs> for many years. <laughs> right? And then the same person, your mother, have to put another mask for your father. <laughs> Maybe your mother is a very unhappy wife, but she tried to be a nice wife and another mask. Do you understand? <laughs> you know, it's, it's like we really lose ourselves. Yeah. We kind of lose ourselves, and we always worried about other people's uh, judgment and you know, gossips and this and that. Do you understand? So that's why. The, the main issue is we lack of self-understanding, self-knowing, right? That's why it's called three doors. First door is the body. You try to know yourself, to understand yourself, and then you like yourself, and then you love yourself, and then you meditate in this and that, and then you can be yourself, okay? That's the key point. You can be yourself. Don't pee on yourself. <laughs> but at end, it's it's mat. You know, in your life, at end, it matters you what you feel and who you are. Do you understand? Because it's your life. Is it like that? At end, right? 
At the end, it, your life is matters for you because you are the center of the, your life. You are the center of your own universe. Okay, that's the body. Then speech. So when we talk about the speech, speech, speech is more referred to the energy. Okay? As I told you yesterday already, we can call it the chi in Chinese tradition. Chi. And then in yoga is the prana. And in the ancient the Greek tradition is pneuma, the breathing, the air. But if we don't breathe, then we don't have speech. So that speech refers to this. And uh, I think this is also the reason, like some people, they like to talk, you know, they like to sing. They use this uh, speech energy a lot. Mm -hmm. And using this, what do you say, using the speech, speaking to others or listening this and that, and also it's a way to understand ourselves better, right? And that is the mind, so you know that already. That's the gross level. And then if we go one level deeper, subtle level, what we have, so now instead of we are talking about uh, our physical skin, skeleton, uh, bones, bone marrow, blood, and fat, so now we are not talking this physical aspect, we are talking more energy level, and then we talk channels. Okay? Channels. Channels. Energy channel. Energetic channels. So now you have to forget about this physical part, okay? Something inside this physical part. It's like there is another structure for our body that's made of channels. <clears throat> Thousands of channels, 72,000 channels. And then in these channels, what we have is the energy, bloom energy. Okay? That's the base, that's the foundation of the speech. That's the foundation of the speech. And then, what is the essence? The essence is like, uh, this essence is like uh, energy drops, you know? Something like essential oil, okay? So you imagine there are many channels, like, uh, like a root of tree, giant the tree, you know, the root, there are so many channels, little branches and so on. So that's like our body. Okay, there are some of them they connected with solar energy, some of them they connected with lunar energy, some of them they are more connected and neutral, also solar and lunar, okay? This. And inside is running the energies. There are many different colored energies. Energy. You can imagine like electric energy or wind or air. Many things are running inside. Okay? That's called the lung, prana. And then this energy running there is not just the air, empty air. This energy goes through kind of essential oil. That's called the essence. Okay? Some kind of fluid. Very essential fluid. We call it tile. Okay? So the body is represented by the channels. And the speech or energy is represented by the movement. And then... Inside this channel and with movement, there is something oily, there is some fluid. There is some fluid stuff, that's called the tingling. Do you get it? So that's about our subtle body. We call it subtle body. Alright? So there is a kind of our own copy, you know. The channels, the energies, and the tingles. So this is the reason why we have to do yoga exercises, you know. All the Tibetan yoga exercises. Why we have to move a lot, you know, Tibetan yoga, normally they are fast moving, fast, fast moving. We have to unblock the channels. Unblock the channels. It's something like this. Energy is running, running, right? The channel running. And uh, let's say the channel is blocked and then the energy can run. Energy blocks here, okay? And then we have to move very fast. Tibetan yoga, hold the bumba jam, the breath, and you move and move. And what you are doing, what you are doing, move and move and move and move. Unblocking the channels. Once you unblock the channel, and then energy flows. Okay? But it's just a flowing, the energy itself is not enough. We need the tingle, the essence, is uh, the essential fluid too. All right? So what this essential fluid is doing is, it's the mind. This essential fluid is the base for the mind, okay? That's the question. 
where the mind is located, where the consciousness is located. Right? If you talk with the scientists, uh, doctors, neuroscientists, they all say, okay, mind is the brain, brain is the mind. <coughs> there is no question uh, you know, for them, right? If they are so sure about that. So then you ask uh, spiritual people where is the mind, and most people is mind is in the heart. Right? Mind is in the heart. All old tradition, spiritual tradition, they are saying, our mind consciousness is in the heart and the heart. All right? So Tibetan medicine says the mind is both in the brain and the heart. They are kind of connected. That's a very special view according to Tibetan medicine. And then here in the subtle anatomy, this one says mind somehow it's everywhere. Okay? So we talk this essence. Tibetan is called the Tigle. Sanskrit should be Bindu, Bindu. Okay? So now in this uh, system, where is Tigle, there is a mind. Where is a mind, there is a Tigle. So somehow this Tigle, the essence, the essential fluid, that's the base for mind. It means mind, there are some basic locations for the mind. Okay? Basic location of mind are five chakras. But then mind is running everywhere. We cannot say this is the location of mind itself. We cannot say only brain is the location of mind itself. Okay? Somehow in our body, wherever we can feel, wherever we have blood, and wherever we have temperature, we have a feeling, mind is there too. Because there is a tigle. So therefore mind is always moving with tigle. Okay? And the interesting thing is like this. So if you have a good tigle, the es essen essence, essences, if you have enough essences in your body, if you have, maybe I use the Tibetan word, tigle, <laughs> it's easier, okay? So the imagination of the tigle is like a kind of light fluid, do you understand? It's like light, but it's more like a fluid form. Tigle is something always kind of like a river flowing. All right? So, then the interesting thing is like this. Sometimes, you know, uh, let's say, some people, they feel very sad, okay? Without the reasons, right? Sad people, there are some sad people. Maybe they have diff many reasons, but they don't have one specific reason, they just feel sad. You wake up morning early, you just feel sad. You are doing something uh, by yourself, and you feel sad, and you feel lonely and sad. Do you understand? So the sadness can, how do you say, come in any moment. So why I'm saying this sadness, that's something connected with tigle. So that depends on your tigle. If your tigle is flowing, you have a good mood. Okay, you have no sadness. When tigle is blocked or when tigle is decreased, then the sadness comes. Okay, so somehow, some people, they really think, oh, I want to be happy, you know, I don't want to feel sad. There's no reason to be sad. But they feel the sadness. They don't know why. And now in this explanation, we can say, this person is lack of tigle. Okay? So, somehow, uh, yeah, maybe the, some tigle is uh, like some our hormones too, you know. But tigle is similar to happy hormones. Happy hormones are increased, we are happy, we feel joy. No reasons, I'm happy, ah. Uh -huh. right? And happy hormones are decreased and then you feel sad. Something similar like this, tigle. But of course, tigle can be more than happy hormones. Right? <coughs> yeah, yeah, you should call. Uh, Here. Great. Okay, okay, some very uh, simple uh, experience. You touch here. Okay. Okay, first you press this point. You know this is acupressure point, right? Mm -hmm. Acupressure. Press it. Do you feel pain? Mm -hmm. You press until you feel pain. Do you feel pain? Yeah. Yeah, everyone? Okay, it's good. That's a painful point. And now you do the other side. But don't press. Now you only touch on the skin. Very soft to touch. Be gentle, be gentle. Uh, 
Hey, don't worry the location, just be gentle. Be gentle. <laughs> what do you feel? Do you feel ticklish? Ticklish? What do you feel? Sleep. None of this feeling. Something nice? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Really ticklish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit like, kind of like some of what? Like a little bit of like blissfulness. I don't know if that's the word. Okay, now, now, okay, now you stop, 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 stop. <laughs> you like it, huh? Okay. Now you compare these two. Here you have pain, here you have some strange feeling. Something nice, tickless, this and that. Okay? So, so here I hope you can still experience some pain, or there is no feeling, okay? So this is called when tickle is decreased. Or you feel pain, or you don't feel anything, or it's not disturbing you. No feeling. And this one is called the when tigle is increased. This is the feeling of this tigle. Do you understand? Something tingling, like ticklish, and it's, it's long lasting. It's still there? You see, it's interesting. The other one, you really pushed with your power, this, and there was a pain, and when you finish, it's a gun, or maybe a little bit pain. But this one, you touch the very soft, and it's long lasting. <laughs> okay. So, then acupressure massage is good or not? According to Tigle, it's not so good. So there's another massage, it's called the La Massage. It's just doing this. Stimulate some points like this, and then this make you, uh, you know, this changes your mood. You feel very happy and bliss and so on. That's called the La Massage. Can we learn that? Huh? Can we learn that? You want to learn that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tonight, tonight. <laughs> okay, yes? For people that have chronically deficient tingle, what's the right way to deal with that? Is, what's the, like for someone that has just chronically low... Yeah, if deficient of tingle, then meditation. When you visualize here, you know, the bliss, that's also a way to bring up the tingle. Okay? This is something very interesting. I think with the visualization, meditation, holding the breath, we can change something physiologically, okay? Not only something mental level. So you do this meditation again and again and again and again. If you are really good for doing this in future, even you don't do meditation, you have this tingly feeling. The bliss is always there. Do you understand? So that meditation is one way of uh, increasing, and another one is this... Uh, this La Massage, that also helps increasing. And then uh, the meditation we did, you know, bringing back the five elements, that, that one will help also for increasing La. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this is one experience. Now you know what Tigle is. When there is a Tigle, it's always kind of nice feeling. When the Tigle is decreased, then we feel sad on this. And also something very interesting, you know, like uh, grief. You say grief, right? Grief. You know, when you lose someone very badly, you wear this deep sadness. The grief is the grief, the emotion is so powerful, so strong, and that like blocks the tigle. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's like block. The tigle is completely blocked, and that's why, you know, people, they feel like numbness. There's no feeling at all. You eat food, there's no taste, right? You listen to music, normally you like to listen, that the moment of grief is not uh, working anymore. Music, food is not tasty, music not nice to do, you understand? So you lose your smile, you lose your joy, and all these things. So that's the typical sign that tingle is blocked. <clears throat> so it's interesting, you know, somehow we're not saying mind is just mind itself, you know, you do a meditation and then it helps for mind. But there's a, the Tigle is saying mind is also part of body, physical part. Mind is a physical part. So that's why if we work also in the physical level and that can, how do you say, comfort mind or we can work with mind. Okay, that's about Tigle. So that lung, the energy is more like flowing, you know. Energy needs to move, and the tigle is more the feeling and sensation, and then the channel is our body, that's the base. All right? Three doors.
actually two questions. Um, when you do the massage here on the hand, is there any sound to like in the long massage? And then also, what if somebody has a stroke in their hand? That affects the tibia, right? Anything of course, yeah, the tibia is blocked, yeah. 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 But when you do this, the stroke is, there any type is of affecting the head chakra. So once the head chakra is affected, you we lose the bliss. Yeah. Because the head chakra is called the chakra of great bliss. Okay. So do you recommend la massage for Yeah, someone? of course. Yeah. Of course. But, but, but what sound do you recommend for this point? C. C. Uh -huh. All right. So the Vajra body. Let's go to see the Vajra body. I hope we have enough time. Do you want to make a short break? Yeah. Okay, five minutes of break. Two break, and then yeah, we will go through this. Thing.